Hey, what's going on, guys? Dustin Gidkowski here with the DG Show, and I'm so excited. This guest for me, not only is he just a great dude, he's accomplished so much, but a story that I want to tell after I introduce him is super special to me. It hits close to home because, fun facts, not only would the DG Show not be here, Results Roofing, and my career probably wouldn't be here without Adam Sedlak. So, man, uh, we are here in beautiful California in UFC gym. Adam, man, thank you so much. My pleasure. And I don't know about you not being here. You're an incredible entrepreneur. You got a mentor like Jason Miller. You got a great squad around you. You would have been successful with or without me. Trust I appreciate me. that. Yeah. But I tell the story. Uh, there's two people I always talk about in the fitness industry that I hold uh, dear to me. You're one of them, of course, thank Jason you. Miller. And the funny story was... Uh, what I always loved about you, people people would always say, well, Adam was a driver. He was really hard on me. I'm like, yeah, but did you have more success with Adam or without Adam, right? And I always felt like people had more success with you. And I remember, uh, and you might not remember this story, but the reason I credit to you, I was a wild child and still kind of am, but I was working in 24 Hour Fitness Austin. We both started at 24 Hour Fitness and you were the first person that promoted me. And I remember uh, there was a couple managers there, and I can't remember why, but somehow I had won a contest to a dinner or something, mm -hmm. and you guys were talking about promotions. And I don't even know if you guys really realized I was there or didn't care, but I heard three other people that were like, he's too young, because I was like 19 at the time. Maybe, I don't know if You're I was young. 20, yep. I was young. Um, and they all said, you can't promote him, he's too young. And you said, I believe in him. He's a young, I'm gonna give him a shot. And I remember you promoted me and it put a chip on my shoulder. But I say, I go, hey man, when nobody else believed in me, Adam did, right? Like he believed in me and gave me the opportunity. And sometimes that's all you need. It was later in life too with Jason. He did the same thing. He was a guy that believed in me and gave me a shot. So my question for you to start off, I wanna get into your journey because I think there's a lot of things to uncover for people to really can connect to but let's use me as an example, but I would like to go further. What did you see in me and what do you look for in people to promote? Because me, maybe I had talent at the time, but I, didn't, I hadn't showcased it yet. Yep. So what do you look for in people or what did you see in me that you, that you saw like this could make this person special in our business, sales business, entrepreneurship, anything? Well, let's talk about you right? because, I mean, that's the reference point. And when you're scaling a business, you're an incredible businessman now, and you talk to team members, it probably takes you about 30 seconds on a gut feel to understand yeah. the potential value that that team member has, right? So there's a, there's a bunch of boxes that have to be checked. You know, obviously trust is something that is earned over a period of time. So you don't necessarily know if you can trust the person right out of the gates. That's done through repetition. Um, but I'll tell you what, fire, passion, engagement, empathy, um, discretional effort, uh, attitude, all those things you can pick up in 30 seconds after talking to somebody if you ask the right questions. The problem that so many of us as leaders, including myself sometimes, yeah, well, end up it. doing is we, we know what we want to hear and we don't know how to listen. And so with you, listen, we were in, and you correct me if I got the story wrong, okay? But I think we were in Austin, Texas. Yeah, we were in Austin. And I remember um, Mark Mastroff calling me and saying, hey, you know, the market's been struggling. We've had a few challenges here and there. And let's go in there and kind of revamp the energy and yeah, vibe it up a little bit. On. I think we just signed William Cannon. Yeah, it was, yeah. I don't even know if it was in pre-sale yet, but yeah, it was around, it was around time. there. Yeah, yeah, and and Lake Creek was one of the most, and Rock, Round Rock, do I have it right? So yeah, so we had, there was, uh, Hancock Center was like the, the yeah. it was killer. The college I, one. Yeah, I was the, uh, I, I opened that one as an assistant yeah. or with, yeah. but yeah, there was Round Rock. And Lake and, Creek. And Lake Creek was opening. And Lake Creek was one of the most, or the highest underperformer at the time. And you couldn't necessarily find overachievers that wanted to take on the mm. role. But then there was you. Yeah. And, and you were not afraid of anything. And although you, at that point, you know, I was young as well, right? Mm. Still learning how to have better presence. But at that point, when I saw somebody like you that's a young pup, that's going 100 miles an hour, 
That is this instinctively something you can't teach, which is natural hustle factor, right? You had that. And if you have that, I will take that 10 out of 10 times versus a resume that says this is a doctorate with 30 years of education and how qualified they are and all these different references. No, I'll take you all day long that has fire, energy, enthusiasm for the role that are passionate about achieving and having success. And so really, man, you sold me with who you are, not what your resume is. All right. That's good. How can, how can people, you know, I, obviously entrepreneur myself, right? Yeah. And it is the struggle. It's reinventing yeah. myself. Yeah. And I'm sure you've gone through this reinventing yourself. And so for people that don't know, it's one of the, the things I admire you about the most is you worked for 24 Hour Fitness and UFC gym. That's it. Yeah. That's your two jobs. So you've been in the fitness industry, would you say, since 1994? 94, which makes me, I think, old now, right? Have I turned into that older generation now? Yeah. Am I there? I got I got told the other day I was a millennial, and I was like, <laughs> what? But I guess 94, so thir you've been 30 years in the fitness industry. Yeah. 30 years. You've worked for two organizations. In both 15 years each. 15 years each. What? So 24-hour fitness, and you were there with Mark, which I think Mark is... I laugh at, he's probably one of the greatest entrepreneurs yeah. ever, yep. uh, greatest leaders. I remember uh, working with at 24 Hour Fitness. I, a couple of times I learned these stories about how my mouth was good. It got me in a lot of things, it also got me in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I remember a, a story with Mark though, is why I always remember there's two different stories and you probably have a story like this and, 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 and touch on it, the, the difference. He um, uh, he was there for the William, I don't know, the uh, Hancock Grand Open. Okay. And I, you weren't and you weren't there I yet. I wasn't there yet. Yeah. No. And uh, so it was like all these DMs from Houston. You know, everybody came in to make a show. And this is just tells you, like, for everybody listening, like, what type of leader you should be. He had 200 plus clubs at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, there's Magic Johnson clubs. He's he's living the dream. And he's in our club, and he's in the GM office. I had no idea. And I was going, I was gunning for this cash contest that he put out. And uh, Billy. Hey, Dustin, come here. I want you to meet these guys. And so there's a bunch of good. There was, I yeah. think, Brian Boma at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dave Tinsley. All these guys Joe were in Bartels, there. Joe Bartels, I'm Joe sure. Bartels yeah. was in there. And they're like, I got upset because there's all these DMs from Dallas and Houston there making a scene, but they weren't doing anything, right? And, you know, me, I'm like 19, 20 years old, and I'm signing up like five people at a time, and I'm getting stuff off the printer. And I go in there, and Billy's like, I want you to meet these people. I go, hey, guys, like, I appreciate y'all coming out, but either y'all get to work or hit, hit it out of here. <laughs> and everybody went like, pale white and so i go i go back out and billy's like you need to come with me now and i was like what do you, what do you mean and he goes you need to come with me now I go, i'm saying he goes no you don't understand so i went in there and he goes it was mark he cleared everybody out and he asked me like do you know who i am like you know not like in that kind yeah. of way and i was like i do now <laughs> i didn't realize it was and he's like who do you think you are and i was like man nobody i'm just trying to win you put out a contest and i want to win it and he was like, I like that. And the conversation went completely on. He's like, go get back to work. So that was my first interaction with him. So my second interaction was for the same contest. I won that contest and I was supposed to get paid and I didn't get paid. And I was supposed to get paid like, I think it was like five grand or something like that. It wasn't on my check. And this is when I, I thought I would never work for another organization again. Yeah. I got a call that, it was a Friday night and they said, and obviously California is two hours back. You didn't get your money. Here's my number. Go get your bank account info. This is back in like 04. I send my bank account info to him. Here's my number. Give me a call in the morning. The money should be in your account. I said, not a problem. I, it was accounting, right? Yeah. And I was like, you know, I was just really counting on that as a young guy. Not a problem. And I'm being a little mouthy. I can't believe yeah. this happened. Da, da, da. And the next morning it's in there. So I call back that number. And I was like, hey, I just want to thank you. Like it was in there. And I was like, you know, by the way, who is this? And it was Mark. Mark singly handled it because he did the contest. And I was like, man, like this guy's doing all this and yet he still took the time yeah. to do that. So for people that don't know, I know he owns UFC, what, UFC gym. What else does he have? He has the NFL fit, so Cowboy yeah. fit as an example out in Texas. Um, Chiefs fit, you know, all, all those organizations. He owns more than I could possibly understand. I, I, I looked at his, his uh, portfolio one time and I lost interest after page 37. Sounds about um, right. But he's, you know, the, the special thing about Mark, and it's really his superpower. I mean, the guy's probably notching towards a billion dollars. And if you didn't know any better, uh, he's working in the steel mill. 
He's very humble. He's 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 a, he's a man of the people because he can relate to everybody. And that's that power through you call it emotional intelligence, whatever it might be. Um, that's a skill set that allows Mark when you intersect it with passion and capability and intelligence and being a good salesman. I mean, that, that is, that is what it is about from a business perspective is that ability to be unassuming, don't operate with ego, connect with everybody yeah. and then use what makes you different and unique to your, uh, to your benefit. And then you wind up in an amazing position like he has. So, I mean, and you're no, you guys here at UFC gym. 170 locations, right? Uh, there's 40, 50 internationally, there's 70 internationally. Yep. Uh, Mark is owner, one of the owners. Yeah, so, so the way we're set up is we have about 20 clubs that we own. Outright. And operate outright. And then we have about another 15, 20 clubs that are what you call MSA, which are management service agreements. Okay. It's kind of like the hotel model with Marriott. Yeah. Uh, a high net investor comes in, buys the club, they say, hey, Adam, we want you to run it and manage it. We don't want anything to do with it. Uh, and then we do that for a management fee. And then everything else is domestically is franchise. International is incredibly complicated because every country has its own franchise law. Oh, wow. So you have to create something called an MTA, uh, which is a territory agreement by region, uh, interfacing with localized franchise law. So what we do is we reach out the best fitness operators around the globe and we say, hey, UFC gym's coming, do you want to be a partner? They end up buying the license and we support them through that purchase license. And then we do a revenue share on everything. So we, we share royalties, we share um, club fees, those types of variables, why they build their business in all these countries. So now we're developing in 40 countries. Wow. Um, and each country has a development schedule over about a 10 to 15 year period where they, they go from anywhere from like six clubs in Bolivia to a hundred clubs in India, right? It just depends on the country. Yeah. That you're in. What is the connection, obviously, besides the name UFC, what is the connection with UFC gym and, you, you know, the UFC? Well, I mean, initially it started with, you know, Lorenzo Fertitta, yeah. I'm sure, right? So Lorenzo, Lorenzo, Dana, um, they got together with Mark and they said, hey, this is back in 2008. That's a powerhouse group. That, yeah. I would yeah, love that, to be that's, in that a, that's a big room yeah. right there. And they came together with an idea. Jim Rowley was in it as well, if you remember Jim. Yeah. And they came together to an idea to do gyms with the UFC. Now, at that point, we didn't know if they were going to be big, small, mid you know, whatever it might be. But we wanted to do about a five club test. So Mark put in half the capital, UFC put in half the capital, and then we were off and running. We started the first club in Concord, second club in Rosemead, third club is by my house in Corona. What year was that, you said? 2008, Eight? 2009. Okay. And this is still before the peak of UFC. This is kind of, this is early UFC. It was just so. taken off. Yeah. It was just taken off. Um, this club was, the one that we're in now is in Torrance, California, was the fourth gym ever built. Oh, wow. That's and that, and this, one, this one opened in 2012. Um, so it went so amazing in that initial test. And part of it was because we had great people that really helped out. Uh, the other part of it is we picked pretty good real estate. Um, and then the third part of it was UFC was becoming an emerging brand. Um, so once we knew this was going to work out, we then went and acquired a franchise company, uh, LA Boxing, okay, which yeah. you may be familiar with. So we, we purchased that 2013, and we really purchased it for the benefit of franchising and understanding how to franchise and grow the brand. So the everyday Joe could own and feel and be part of the UFC, not just through the actual MMA promotion, but also experiencing the brand. Yeah. Um, so it worked out extremely well in the, in the bigger segue went in the international, right? We, once we started to go international, like in the UAE, Mexico, Australia were kind of our first countries. It really started to take off. And listen, like any business, there's challenges and adversity. Absolutely. With franchise, there's even more challenges in adversity because as you go in the franchising, there's generally between a 5 and 10% failure rate, whether it's due to lack of operators or lack of capital or whatever it might be. So you always have things that you're dealing with, adversity that you're dealing with, but as long as you control what you can control, 
you generally do the right thing, you have the right empathy, you can pretty much navigate through anything. And, and for like people out there, especially, I preach this a lot, stay in the course, right? Yeah. If you want anything special in life, you have to stay the course. You don't, you don't hear people go, oh, you and your wife were married two years, got a divorce, congratulations, that's yeah. special. It's 20 years, 30 years, it's that run that you know, gets it, that really creates a legacy. And for you, you've been with two uh, companies for 15 years each. And I think most people that left 24, didn't leave because we wanted to if it would have stayed the way probably would, would have stayed forever yep. right but yep. for how important has it been for him you're the ceo of you know what 200 plus locations this is a huge brand ufc gym um how important has been staying the course for you and how have you been able to navigate that for somebody listening because we hear people all the time they work at a job 12 months two years like it's not for me i'm going to the next one and i feel that's almost when your breakthrough happens how important has the longevity been for you? But what are some things that you've done to be able to stay the course? Because 15 years is a long time and you've done it twice. It's a great question. So my view is this. Um, there's always a reason why I'm in my current position. And there's people that invested into me. Right now, as we sit today, and I'm not complaining about my compensation, I do just fine. But I get offers all the time for double my pay. I can go right now and go do something different. And every single time I say I'm thankful for the opportunity, but no thank you. And it's because if you, if you drive, this is something that you should never do on a podcast is yeah. keep your phone on. It's all right. <laughs> uh, if, you, if, you, if you think about your journey, and you think about your own journey, right? You think about your journey and everybody that's helped you along the way. Mm -hmm. And the first sign that there's adversity, you, you get out. Yeah, right. Every time. And what is that message that you're giving to the people that are investing into you? And what kind of credibility do you have at that point? At 24 Hour Fitness, I probably had 30 journeys of complexity where... I got frustrated, upset, yeah. I was emotional. I was, as a young kid, I was very similar to you. Um, very passionate and wanted to outwork everybody. And, and when you're emotional like that, it's very easy just to say, F this, let's go find right. something else, right? Let's go to LA Fitness or let's yeah. go somewhere else. But when I look at the amount of time and the amount of energy that people put into me, and then on top of that, I look at the amount of people that are now around me in my circle of association, the people that either work for me now or work side by side with me. I go, man, I have something special here. This, it's not just about what I'm making today. It's not just about the adversity I'm going through today. It's about this journey that we go through together to build this empire, to build the economics, to build my future earnings, to build my relationships. And so by staying loyal to the brand, I now have relationships with people that I would have never had if I would have went from one company to the next every two to three years. Absolutely. Mark, Mark is, I mean, listen, um, don't tell him I said this, but I'd almost work for him for free at this yeah. point. It, and and that's, that's the relationship, right? Is that it's trust and it's unconditional trust. And I can talk to him at any time with it's in my head and he can get me right. I can't go find that anywhere. Great I can't I can't go buy that. Yep. That's that's trust earned through years. And there's so many people that I have the benefit. There some of them are in this club right now that I have the benefit that I get to work with every day that have that same passion level, that same desire to be empathetic, to really care about each other and this company and about how we change people's li lives in the in the fitness industry, yeah. right? They're all there today. Why would I give that up for an extra 50 grand or 100 grand? Or why would I give that up uh, to make life easier? And what kind of message am I sending everybody else in the first step of adversity that I check out? It's a terrible way for new team members, current team members to see some type of leader or executive do that. Yeah. So just like your business, uh, Dustin, is that you have adversity. You have probably employees that have worked for you that said that we're all in, and then for some reason, short adversity, they ended up exiting yeah. out, and then they end up talking about you because what they want to do is they want to rationalize their own failures, Why they left. reflect it back on you, 
uh, and try to put themselves in a better position. Well, 10 out of 10 times, it's on them. Yeah, right? oh, it always is. What, and and it's crazy. We, we go through this all the time. You know, I people are like, how do you deal with it? I'm like, I don't. You know, it's like, I, I, I and, and you said something, a, a few things that really, you know, hit me. You were like, I'd almost work for him for free. And I just got asked on a podcast that I was on the other day. They're like, how much money did you make last year? And I said, I don't know. He was, oh, you're being modest. I go, man, I really don't know. And I, it, it actually stumped me for a second because I was like, how do I not know that? And I thought, like, that's a bad thing. That I, but I could tell you every number of results roofing, all of our brands. I could tell you down to our views. Like, we were just at, yeah. like, hey, 112,000 views in the last 28 days on the long form. Like, I know those, but... I didn't know it and it wasn't always like that for me. So I used to be very, very money motivated. Yeah. I thought money was the, the now, I thought money was it. And for you, staying somewhere 15 years, you made a great point. Hey, I could get double the money. At what point in your life did you realize that money wasn't the fulfillment? And was there something that happened to you that realized it wasn't, money wasn't fulfillment? Because when you stay somewhere for 15 years and you work with someone like you have and you have other offers, most people take those. And you take those because it's your family, right? You have. You have a family and that's how you know a lot of what we do but at what point did you realize was there something that happened and said man it's not about the money it is but it, there's something else beyond fulfillment if so when did that happen and really what is like what do you see like your ultimate fulfillment is yeah the you know i think for me initially when we were going through some transitions at 24-hour fitness um there was a leadership change mm -hmm. right around 2007 and it was complicated because there was this old regime that to me were the best in the industry that were accomplishing amazing things, growing that company to 430 clubs at that point. I got fired for this, by the way. <laughs> so, tell that story, but yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah. yeah. And then this new group comes in and they have, listen, everybody has their own way of doing things. Absolutely. So I can't necessarily, although when I was young, I was pointing my finger because I didn't know any better. But as I look back, I'm now much more understanding that they had to do what they had to do to go the direction they wanted to go. But I always view life as if you do the right thing, fundamentally to what you know is right for both people, process, and your consumer, that typically the right result ends up happening back to you. So you have to have a position of integrity that are, have certain non-negotiables. Otherwise, you can't look at yourself in the mirror. And so I intersected that with that. I, it became challenging. It became you know, more of an adverse situation towards the end of 24 hour, which I was really sad about. Yeah. Because it was as a young entrepreneur at that point, I was like um, emotional and, and it, was, it was the only thing I ever knew in the professional world. Same. So all of a sudden, this was being pulled from with, under me, right? And... I thought I lost my identity and I was, I mean, literally, I remember sitting in a parking lot and crying Yeah. and just thinking to myself, this is all, this is who I am. And then Mark calls me and says, and made it very clear to me that I'm not defined by a company. I'm defined how I live my life, how I treat others, how my kids turn out, how my family turns out. And when you do the right thing, the right thing always happens back. So sure enough, through that relationship and through that understanding, I started to evolve my paradigm, my thought process to better understand how to be a better, more professional business person with more executive presence. Yes. Where you don't make every decision based on emotion, you make it on facts and data and information. And then it's funny you say that about your pay because I don't have any idea what I make. Yeah. I have no idea. All I know is I have a direct deposit that goes in, yeah. I have automatic bill payment that goes out, and then my accountant calls me every quarter and says that I'm in trouble for something, right? Yeah. And I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta cure it. But I don't look at it because although it's a motivator, and the motivator is, and you should be a little bit more motivated by money in my opinion, not for you today, for your kids it's for tomorrow. the kids that's yeah. what yeah yeah and you want to take care of them right yeah. they're your life they're your extension they're going to be here talking about you when you're gone yeah and and you can't replace that relationship so for me that was that was the pure motivation was my family and then the other motivation was seeing people go from maybe even like your story where you could you couldn't even fill up your gas tank yeah. to being able to buy a new car right 
seeing that transformation with a young person is the most amazing feeling in the world. When, you, when you're at results now, how many lives have you oh, changed it's, it's wild. where, where yeah. people are, are like struggling and all of a sudden they're finding the best version of who yeah. they are because of the opportunity you gave yeah. them. And to me, that's what it's about. That's the ultimate fulfillment. And especially too, I've always had this realization. So my, so my kids, right? And my, I'm blessed. You know, my oldest to turn seven in June. Uh, Kobe's three. He turns four in May. And Gianna's only one. But Connor is so much like me personally. It's, it's, I, I, when people tell you real men have girls, I'm like, hey, man, uh, the big man puts boys in your life to show you, okay, man, well, this 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 kid, all the bad you have, I'm putting him in him, and yeah. he's gonna test your patience. And Connor's so smart; he's he's a hustler. Like, I mean, just little things. This kid the other day was buying fifty cent ice creams at school and selling for a dollar. You know, he's like, like he's a, he's an like entrepreneur. It. You know, yeah. he's my guy, and he does. So he does MMA. We have a private coach that comes to the house three days a week. And but you got to teach him. He needs two keystones, not one. Yes, exactly. he buys over fifty. It's a buck fifty. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then, but he was winning because he wasn't giving me back my fifty okay. cents. So, so he's got the two keystones. So he's okay. property. Okay. Right, so he's great. got. It. He goes, Dad. It was my money. You gave it to him. I'm like, All right, solid All argument. Right. He he trains three days a week, and it, there's like a I, I've I've learned, man, and I don't. I guess kids have taught me the patience of dealing with others. And I, you know, I went through that 24 hour fitness as well, man. And I don't think people realize it's not what you do, it's who you do it with. Mm -hmm. It's the utmost important. And I, I got fired for when that whole thing went down because I ran my mouth. I was a little bit younger and I said some things I shouldn't have said and I was just over it. And rightfully so, they should have. And I look back on it. Actually, funny story, man. When I, when I started my company, I texted every entrepreneur I ever worked with and said, man, I'm sorry for the way I acted when I was there because I thought I had to go through this maturity. And I think I, kind of a similar situation though, I worked with Jason. And Jason was one of the guys that believed in me as well. And when I left Jason, I quit on him because of some some chances that I, uh, some circumstances I'd went through beyond his control. But I still feel like I quit on him. And there was a story, man, that uh, when I got, when uh, Jason actually got let go, and people wonder what loyalty does. And I'm sure it's probably similar to what has, how Mark feels about you, why, why you're here. And I look at it, there's probably way more people more talented than me, more skilled than me. But there's a trust bond. And when Jason was let go at Texas Family Fitness, it was for the wrong reasons. And it, it's kind of your foundation of like why I believe if you do the right thing, it's always the right thing. And the right thing always come around. He got let go. And I remember him calling me and saying, hey, Dustin, um, I'm telling you before I tell my wife, they're going to come to your club. They're about to go to a meeting and they just let me go. And I was like, are you kidding me? I thought he was joking. Um, and he goes, hey, man, classic Jason Miller. This is why I loved him was your my wife just found out she was pregnant by the way your wife just found out she's pregnant you're married now don't do anything stupid calm down you need to tell them f jason miller you bleed blue stay the course and i was like okay so i go to this gm meeting i stay calm i get back and they're at my club before i get there and I walk into this meeting, man, and it's our like. And you're known as a Jason Miller guy at this. Oh, 100. Right? They, 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 they knew, right? Yeah. So they came in, they start telling me this stuff, and they're like, "Man, they're just." And I'm sitting there going, "Relationships mean the world." And I spent my whole life kind of like what you said before that. You're like, "Man, if I bounce around, I lose these relationships." I'd come back to work for Jason, and I was having a great run, and I felt like I was starting to mature in my life a little bit, you know, trying to be better and still still young and maturity and they're just telling me all these things for like an hour and then at the end they're like you got a spot if you want to stay and i remember i'm listening to what jason said my wife's like i support you whatever you do babe and i looked at both of them and i go fuck you and fuck you wow and i said this is the stupidest thing i've ever seen in my life you guys are wrong this thing will hold burn down you fired one of the best leaders on this earth and i said it's wrong and we got into it it was bad and I ended up getting let go for that. And what was crazy about that, man, was I struggled for a long time after that. I went from um, True Fit for about a year. I went to Crunch for about a year and really struggled because I felt like for a long time I was searching for 24 hour fitness again, really. And I finally just said, man, I told Jason, I said, man, one day we're going to work together. Again. So you were now, searching man. for Jason Miller. You well, I, I was searching for the, it was the, it, I think people don't appreciate great leadership until it's gone. Mm. And they don't, you don't appreciate like, and it's not even, it's the people you work with, right? Like you say, and you, and you leave and I said, man, we're gonna work together again. And I finally said, why don't we just create it, right? And I think it's kind of like 
what Mark's done is take people that he cared about and it's almost like you feel like you create opportunities for them too. Yeah. Like you create a company for them. And I don't think people understand the importance of that, man, that trust and that longevity and that 15 years. Cause after five years, 10 years, 15, I trust you. I trust you with my life. I trust you with everything I do. There's so much that goes into it, yeah. man. And I, 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 for you going through this and going through this twice, 15 years, like you're an incredible leader. And I, there's people back here working out. I think this is a huge component of staying. You're always coaching up other people, man. How do you coach up Adam Sedlak, CEO, like he's at 200 locations. How do, you, how do you coach you up? And for leaders, so how do you coach up Adam and then two part? For other leaders out there that are maybe struggling with the mental component, the leadership component, what are some things that you've done or they can do to get through that? Yeah, another boy. Where'd you go to question school? I learned pretty from, amazing. I man. learned from some of the best. Uh, yeah, someone once told me, to you can get the answers you want by asking questions." Ah, <laughs> very good, very good. Um, yeah, no, it's it's it is a good question, and I'm a huge, and I wasn't always this way. When I was a young leader, I was very focused on you try to outwork me. It's not going to be possible. And I felt that it was only through my hard work that I could lead people to success. And certainly there's credibility to that, right? Nobody wants to work for somebody that doesn't want to work hard. Yeah. Uh, so that was certainly helpful in my early years. But as I started to emerge and have more responsibilities, I really learned that you can't manage different personalities the same way. 100%. And the problem was I was an aggressive alpha driver. And I wanted people to work 12 hours a day, every day. I wanted me to be your number one, the company to be your number one yes. priority. Um, so you could take care of your family, was, was my view. And it was non-negotiable, right? It was very high expectations. And I learned as I started to grow um, around the US with 24 hour, that the leader in the Midwest in St. Louis, Missouri is gonna be different than the leader in Los Angeles. It's gonna be different than the leader in Miami. And I went through some very good feedback from Brian Bowman at the time, where um, you know he was explaining to me that, Adam, you cannot be the leader you were five years ago in an area that's a deconditioned market. It doesn't make any sense for you to do that. So I started really looking at myself and I'm going, man, how do I, if I'm going to do this, I'm not going to be the true version of who I am, right? Because you yeah. always want to operate in your own skin and yeah. be the best that you, you can. You got to be authentic. You got to be authentic. And people know how to read when you're not. And so then emotional, and I really haven't learned this until probably five, six years ago, emotional intelligence came into play. And EQ is a very powerful thing. I don't know how much studying you've done Love of it, it. but I... self-aware and, and the, the ability for me to understand that you as an individual, when you walk in this octagon with me, I give you the ability to impact me with the way that I feel. I can either have you impact me where I feel inferior, I can have you impact me where I feel confident, or I feel that you care, whatever it is, I do that to myself. Absolutely. So I don't care who is around me, what bullies are around me, what, you know, how smart people are around me. They, I allow myself to change my mindset based on who they are. So if I could control that, I can control a lot. So through that, I learned no matter who comes at me, that I can stay who I am and filter it the right way, then the secret with emotional intelligence is how do you treat others through empathy? My problem was I did not ask the right questions for the people that I was leading at the time to get what their priorities were, what made them tick. So this person in the Midwest, I didn't know. They had a parent that was sick. They had to get home to their parent that was sick. Uh, after you learn all that, guess what? My heart starts to pour. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm an asshole, yeah. right? I'm an asshole. And, and all of a sudden you change the way that you manage other people because of that awareness. So impacting others, others impacting you, emotional intelligence really allows you to become, stay authentic, 
but be the best version of yourself through empathy. And and you can. I think you can be authentic by because I'm I'm that man. I'm very passionate, and I'm, I'm yeah. I want to win at all costs. And like I don't I don't have friends outside of our business. Like I I, I don't you know but like uh, meeting up with other roofers sounds like a terrible idea. I, I don't want to be a part of that. Like I was like that in the fitness industry too, and I drove a lot of people off. And I remember you know told you're a great you're a great manager. You're a terrible leader. And it really, it stung me, but, mm. and, and even to this day though, I don't want to hang out with the competition. I'm trying to bury you. I'm trying to, if you sell a roof or a gym membership, that takes away from one of my people's kids. And I take that personal. Mm -hmm. And, but I, I had, I still have that passion. And if you don't express that, you lose it. But I think there's a, Hey Adam, I want you to make 300,000 a year, but you have to do these things. Does that make you happy? Do you want these things? No, because I've learned that championships are, are won with role players, right? Mm -hmm. Jordan didn't win a championship without John Paxson hitting a big shot, Steve Kerr hitting big shots. Those weren't the MVPs, but they won championships by having those role players. So for me, it's the same. And I think this is my last, not one of the last ones was my career changed when I went from the hustler, the driver, to the start the CEO. When did you make that switch? Because I, I said this the other day, I was talking to someone and I said, man, the conversations I've had with Adam, I feel like he's at another level. Mm. I feel like, and as good as you were at 24, I was like, man, I feel like he's at another level. I feel like he's gone up a notch since being here, whether it be, and you said five years ago, the last three, four, five years. Um, th th how did you, how were you able to make that switch though? What, what was it to you and what do you still do to maybe work on it? Because I know I reinvent myself all the time. It's going from this driver to hustler, to becoming, I mean, you're literally a CEO. Yeah. Because I think a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with that. They work in the business so much, they forget to work on the business. And how have you been able to transition to that? I gotta tell you, I'm not perfect at it. Mm -hmm. uh, I still have problems with that. I'm, I'm walking the club today and I get myself all fired up yeah. like I was <laughs> 27 again. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I literally, I have to take a deep breath and I have to understand the presence and impact that I'm obligated to have towards other people. Because your words carry weight. They, yeah, I mean, it's nice of you to say, yeah. but but yes, I mean, I guess the titled position, yeah, there is a certain element of executive um, accountability. But you throw all that out for a second, right? The most important thing that I can do when I'm here is not that. The most important thing I can do is make sure I understand people and I connect with them. You see, emotional connection is the secret weapon of business. Yeah, absolutely. If you're an employee number to me and I say, Dustin, you, hey, good job today. Here's a hundred bucks. Uh, make sure you do the same job tomorrow. And that's it. You're going to be, a, you're going to appreciate the money but you're not going to think about me one second Ever after again. you leave this yeah. place. And the more that all of us as leaders, and I don't care if you're a young leader at McDonald's or you're a executive leader like Mr. Uh, Elon Musk, the more that people can engage with other people and have empathy, the more credibility, natural credibility you have and that truly, to me, develops executive presence because it's a difficult trait. It's I tough. still and I still yeah. have problems because I go too fast. Like you, I think you're the same way. Oh, 100%. We go really fast in our mind. We want to do everything right now. Yesterday, yeah. Get it done. Yeah. And and sometimes you, when you try to do it that way, you lose the authenticity. You lose the sincerity. Absolutely. You lose the empathy. You lose the trust because it becomes transactional versus emotional. And so engagement is the secret word. And so the most powerful thing I can do here is not be a necessarily an executive present CEO where I'm looking at budgets and saying, why the hell does this TV not work? And why is why, why is it not fixed yet when it should have been fixed 24 hours ago and start lighting people up about it, even though partially I did, yeah. the TV wasn't working. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, but it's asking the right questions of why the TV is not working, yes. right? It's so easy to yell at people for something not happening. It's very, it takes a lot of discipline to ask questions why it's not happening. Absolutely. So to me, that's what it's about. The engagement piece, asking the right questions and connecting to your team. I love that, man. And I know we're almost out of time. We're almost, but... For, I love fitness too. This is obviously a pack. I did this 15 years. So it's changed my life recently as well. 
on how much. You're, I see you on social media. You're working out all the time. Every day with the team, man. And how do you think? What do you think of the cold punch? I love it. Yeah. Um, I love it. I, you know what I love about it? I don't. I, I don't want to get into if there's medical benefits. I don't know. I know for me, I'm very high strung, yeah. and um, I know that uh, this word anxiety and mental health is a big thing right now. Mm -hmm. And I think anxiety is. I'm not going to get into terms, but it's a feeling. Anxiety is like feeling happy. And sometimes I feel happy during the day. Sometimes I feel sad, but anxiety comes and goes. I can tell you what the cold plunge has done for me. I wake up a lot of times with anxiety and trauma from my past. It's something that never goes away. Those dragons are always there and I have to learn to slay them and beat them off at times. And every day I wake up and I'm up at 5 a.m. and I get in that cold plunge, everything in my body goes away and it gets me to zero. And I don't want to do it every single day. I hate it. But I, if I had a video in there, you'd see me like cussing at myself and I get in there and I do it for four to five minutes and I get out and I feel like a new person. I feel like I'm starting over at zero and I feel like I did a non-negotiable today that I forced myself to do it and I got the sucky thing out of the way. I believe exercise, when you get to a level, if you're new in business, exercise isn't gonna help you. If you just started off at UFC gym and you wanna become the CEO, working out is not gonna help you because you just gotta put in the work. The work is the work. Morning routine, but when you get to a certain level, when you become a CEO, you become a leader, Fitness is going to help break through those walls. It's going to help push you to the other side. So it, it is a huge thing. And I know, Adam, I appreciate your time. And I want to ask you like one thing, because I know, man, you've accomplished so much. And you've done some amazing things. And you've impacted a ton of people, right? I always laugh. I feel like there's this J, a, a 20, a Jason Miller, Adam Sedlak tree that just continue to have a ton of success. And there's so many people out there you can trace back. When this, when you're the Adam Sedlak story is over, obviously being a great father, being a great family man, all those things, professionally, man, what does that look like for you when you hang the jersey and the Raptors? What have you wanted to accomplish? And we'll end it on that. And just maybe one piece of advice you can give for anyone out there, especially entrepreneurs, that could be a key to success for them to continue their journey or to start the journey. Mm. You're giving me a lot of good questions, and uh, I gotta, I gotta unpack that a little bit. So. The, the first question being, say it again. When, when, it's, when it's your professional when, career when I get When I see the... Yeah, how, yeah. How, what do you, what is, what's left for you that you want to accomplish, really? Yeah, you're... so, you know, I've been reading a lot about this because as, you know, I've, I finally hit the big 5-0. Right. And that was a, I want to say it's a traumatic birthday, mm -hmm. right? Because it's... it's is, that, is that over the hill or 40? No, I... 40. I I think the new 50 is not, but yeah, not. The, the bottom line is I'm in the back nine, right? And you start looking at life a little bit different. Um, but there's also something very important about keeping your brain active. If you remember when you were a little kid, five, six, seven years ago, or five or six, seven years that ago. That was, for me, it was five, six years ago being yeah. a little kid. These guys had to deal yeah. with me. Yeah. But think about what a 60-year-old looked like when you were six yeah. the culture at that point was when you hit retirement you went into your mobile home or your house and you played bingo watch tv and that's all you did so you stopped using your mind yeah. in today's world what you see now is a lot of successful people working to their 70s and 80s and even yeah. sometimes 90s because it keeps your brain activity going. And that, you know, that firing of, uh, of your nerves and, and the firing of your body keeps things progressing and moving forward. Once you designate yourself for retirement, complacency, well, you're gonna end up three feet under the ground. Yeah, like it's over, right? yeah. So in my opinion, I'm never gonna stop I, I until that. the day that I die. I just can't, I don't know yeah. how to do it. Um, Mark's teaching me that very thing. I mean, that guy is amazing that he takes on what he takes on when he doesn't have to take it all yeah. on. Um, and he still looks the same age as when you and I worked with that's him at crazy. 24 That's crazy, I saw a photo of the day. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. So, so I think, um, I don't think there'll be that day that I just, yeah. you know, in, unless I, I self-assess myself and I'm just say to myself, I'm not relevant to help other people, yeah. then I need to be able to have the courage to do something different, yep. you know, that I can find as an entrepreneur. Um, and, you know, from a, from a leadership perspective and people that are starting off their own business, and 
I don't have a lot of secret sauce. I'm not that smart. Right. I'm right. not that sophisticated. But I'll just say this, is that hard work, correct attitude, can separate you from a lot of people. And if you have an investment into yourself, a lot of times people don't do that the right way. And when I mean investment into yourself, it's nutrition and feeding yourself correctly. It's exercise, exercising correctly. It's seeing a shrink. That's investing into yourself because we all know that we don't, we're not completely an open book with every single person on yes. planet Earth. When you can release your deepest thoughts to somebody that doesn't have an agenda, it's really nice to do and it, it's a good release. Educating yourself, right? You know, you've educated yourself through going through the journey. I'm sure you've read a lot of books. I'm sure you've listened to a lot of podcasts. Yeah. And what you do, somebody like you does, is you take the nuggets from what you read or listen to, you apply it to yourself. And I think instinctively what it tells me is you probably try to do it better than from the person you heard it from. I want to take it and make it better, yeah. Make it better. If it works, why not just make it work better? That's right. So you don't necessarily need to go innovate and do something new. If you can, if you have that skill set, go do it. But if you focus on whatever you want to focus on and try to focus on something that drives passion, you know, because I was inquisitive about you and I'm like, why, what makes Dustin tick about roofs? Like, like I got fitness because I live it yeah. and, I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, so I, I did a little bit of research and I found out that you looked at it not as I love roofs, but you looked at it as a problem that you could solve and that you could close a gap. Yeah. And also you could take care of people, other people and deal and, and provide them a comfort zone, understanding what you went through to get where you're at. And I thought that was very admirable of you. And, and I that. think that if you do something you're passionate about it, you can, you can find an opportunity to close a gap. You can listen to other people that have been experts and, and excellent at what they do and take those nuggets and apply them to your life and do it better than them. It puts you in a pretty good position to be successful. You win. Look, uh, I could do this all day, um, but we can't, unfortunately. Uh, this was so fun to me and so personal because being a 19, 20 year old kid now being 41 and uh, being a father of three, this was one of the first people ever in my life to believe in me, not even uh, career wise. And so getting a chance to see him, his continued success, you know, 20 plus years later, um, what it's grown into. I appreciate your time. Uh, look, guys, you should go follow uh, Adam. I, I remember listening to his conference calls like he always threw nuggets out like he did. And what I've always loved about Adam, he's never tried to BS you on what you could do to be successful. It was always the work is the work, man. And if you can get through the work, you can't, and that resonated with me in my entire career because everybody wants to make it look sexy and it's not the works the work. So make sure that you go follow Adam Sedlak, UFC gym, and I can't wait this one there. Adam, thank you so much for your time. Listen, I, listen, I gotta tell you, I'm proud of you. I appreciate that. I've been watching your journey. Um, you know, quite frankly, I wanted you for UFC gym when mm -hmm. I saw that potentially you could be on the market, but man, the path that you drove with you know Jason's support and the work that you're doing, what I'm most impressed by is you know when you do your workouts and the impact that you have with your team the fact that you bring them in with you on that journey is amazing and you're doing well for your family you're doing well for them so congratulations Appreciate that, man. thank you so much tune into the dg show thank you for watching